But to get cancer takes, as we know from Hiroshima and Nagasaki, leukemia five to 10 years, solid cancers 15 to 60 years. Do we explain that to the public? Do we tell them that no cancer wears an identifying badge saying it was made by some strontium-90 you ate in a piece of chocolate, Hershey's chocolate, 20 years ago as Three Mile Island is 15 miles from Hershey's chocolates and had a major meltdown and many people were impacted. I didn't learn about, oh, I want to just finish, plutonium, iron analogue, combines with transferrin, transferred to the um, mediastinal lymph glands where it can cause lymphoma, stored in the liver where it causes liver cancer, goes to the bone marrow for hemoglobin, causes osteogenic sarcoma or leukemia, crosses the placenta which lets nothing pass except iron, where, like thalidomide, it's teratogenic. It has a predilection for testicles and deposits just next to the spermatogonia, the precursors of the sperm, where it induces mutations that will be passed on generation to generation, while if the man is cremated, his smoke goes out the chimney to get into another man's testicles. And so we can see an exponential increase in genetic disease and deformities for the rest of time called random compulsory genetic engineering. How dare they? And we're not the only species with genes. 30 million other species cohabit the planet with us, all of which have genes, all of which develop congenital deformities and genetic disease and malignancies. I didn't learn about beta radiation, which is given off by radioactive iodine-131. I didn't learn about beta radiation given off by cesium-137. I didn't know what cesium was. It's a potassium analog, ubiquitous in the body, induces brain cancers, rhabdomyosarcomas, rare as hen's teeth. Um, I didn't learn about cobalt-60, which is not a fission product, but an activation product. I wrote about all of this in this book recently, Nuclear Power is Not the Answer. People don't understand that internal emitters induce very high doses of radiation. It's not low-dose radiation, it's high-dose, high-dose. And yet we don't teach them this. And without understanding, we have an uninformed population. An informed democracy will behave in a responsible fashion, and that's what we did in the 80s. We informed people about the medical implications of nuclear war. Most Americans in 78 said to me, oh, it's better to be dead than red. I said, really? They said, yeah, we don't want to be communist. So we started doing the bombing run and dropping bombs on Boston and describing the medical implications vaporization up to five miles, lethal burns up to 20 miles, and they'd wake up in the morning and look at the Boston Globe and say, ooh, nuclear war is bad for our health. In five years, we educated 80% of Americans to be opposed to the concept of nuclear war. Petra and all of you educated Germany and Europe. The whole world rose up and helped to lead to the end of the Cold War. However, the weapons were not removed. We are living with death machines. Death, which is silent, cryptogenic, latent, takes a long time to develop. Only we, the medical profession, understand cancer. And yet we're not teaching the ordinary people, nor the scientifically illiterate politicians, what this means, the latent period of carcinogenesis, the toxicity of these fission products. Angela Merkel, yeah, she's a physicist, good. She understands the danger of Fukushima, good. But does she understand the bio radiobiology? And unless people understand this, we are doomed. That was an excerpt from a speech I gave in Berlin in April 2011 at the International Physicians for the Prevention of Nuclear War Congress on the 25th anniversary of Chernobyl. Thanks for listening today. Look, I know it was emotional. 
I can't help it. I'm a physician, a paediatrician. How many children have I helped to die with cystic fibrosis, the most common lethal genetic disease of childhood, which will be increased in frequency down the time track by nuclear power and and over 2,000 other such diseases? How many children have I helped to die of leukemia or cancer? It's the most heart-rending experience you could possibly imagine. I'm sorry, I can't help being emotional. And I think, indeed, if we're not emotional about these things, there's something wrong with us. And I, I often use this analogy. If I have two parents in my office and I tell them that their child has just been diagnosed with leukemia and they show no emotional response, I get them a psychiatrist because they need help with their grief. Thanks for listening today. We'll be with you next week.